Well, good morning, church. Welcome to Wisdom Thursday. I first of all want to say thank you to Wes uh, for giving us a wonderful uh, look at Ecclesiastes last week. I appreciated his wisdom and his input. Um, back to me today. Uh, and uh, as I always say, if you're yet to read today's passage, which is Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 1 to 12. Press pause, have a read. Uh, it's going to be important uh, as we try to unpack what we learn. All right, well, this week's passage begins and ends with uh, another reminder of the unpredictability of life and of the certainty of death. Life is random. We never know what to expect. Things don't work out logically or fairly, uh, and we're all going to die. Happy Thursday. Uh, a sobering thought, right? But it's one we should be used to now after eight chapters of Ecclesiastes. Uh, but, but, but wedged between these two sobering thoughts uh, is another reminder. It's a reminder about how we should live in the midst of life's randomness, unfairness, uh, vapor, vape, vaporious, is that a word? Uh, Vapour-like nature. Uh, read verses 7 to 10 with me. Go, eat your food with gladness and drink your wine with a joyful heart, for God has already approved of what you do. Always be clothed in white, and always anoint your head with oil. Enjoy your life with your wife, whom you love, all the days of this meaningless life that God has given you under the sun. All your meaningless days, for this is your lot in life, and in your toilsome labour under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. What do we see here? Well, life is random, so just give up. Don't bother trying anything of worth. No, we don't. Well, what about uh, life is random, you're going to die, so milk everything you can out of it because you never know when that moment of your death is going to arrive. No, we don't get that either, do we? Uh, it's not saying either of those things. See, the first is a nihilistic response and the second is a hedonistic response. Uh, but what the teacher gives us in this passage fits somewhere pretty nicely in the middle. We see a form of godly and intentionally restrained enjoyment of the good things in life. The author, we need to remember, that is assuming that the reader is righteous um, and seeking to live a godly life. And with this in mind, he says, well, we can eat, drink and be merry because God has approved of it. God has approved of it. What does that mean? Well, it means enjoying life isn't a bad thing. It's approved of by God. We have his permission. He wants us to enjoy the good things he's given us. The good things that you have worked so hard for. Uh, and the author here lists food and drink and beautiful clothes, physical beauty, the blessings of marriage and your vocation, your work. He wants us to enjoy these things. But let me remind you from the preceding chapters, if we seek meaning and purpose in any of those things, then we're only going to be disappointed. Aren't we? See, the randomness of life and the surety of death reminds us to enjoy all the good things that God has given us. Gifts. Uh, and it's important for us to remember that the material world is not inherently evil. Yes, it is tainted with sin, uh, as are you and I, but God made this world. And he called it good. And in fact, God will one day redeem all of creation physically to its intended purpose. Uh, our destiny is not some disembodied bodied, floating winged creature floating around in the clouds, is it? That's a pagan idea that's steeped in this Greek philosophy of dualism that uh, matter is evil and spirit is good. No, no, no. Our destiny is a new earth. Once again in the presence of the living God, where we will continue to eat and drink at the great wedding feast of the Lamb and continue to work and serve him in our renewed, perfected, sinless bodies. And the greatest embodiment of this, of the goodness of creation, is Jesus, of course, uh, God in the flesh, who died and rose again, rose again in the flesh, right? This wasn't, a, this wasn't a spiritual resurrection. It was a physical resurrection. Uh, if there was something wrong with the material world, Jesus would have just risen again spiritually, but he rose again in a new fleshy body, one that could be touched and seen and felt and hugged and grasped. 
The material world is good. Yeah, it's broken, but it's good. And it's also crying out for redemption. We look forward to the day when Jesus comes and restores all things. And in the meantime, we enjoy the good gifts that he has not only gifted us, but also approved of. What a generous and good God we have, who gives us glimpses of that beauty of the coming kingdom that we can enjoy right now in the midst of a broken, random, unfair and often cruel world. So enjoy that meal. Enjoy that glass of wine. Enjoy enjoy your day's work, your surf, your bushwalk, your bike ride, uh, the embrace of your spouse. God says go for it. Uh, Enjoy these glimpses of the renewed creation that you will also get to enjoy in all its fullness one day. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your generosity and goodness that in the midst of a dark and broken and random and confusing world where we all know our destiny is physical death one day, you've given us the gift and the permission to enjoy the good things that you have created. We thank you for our taste buds and for our uh, ability to smell and hear and feel and uh, yeah, physically and emotionally. Uh, we thank you uh, that you have given us things that look good, taste good, feel good, uh, make us happy. Lord, we're reminded to enjoy them and so help us to enjoy them. Uh, but help us to remember the best way to enjoy them is to see them just as gifts, not as God and to look forward uh, to being in your presence uh, where we can experience these gifts in their fullness, but we can experience the greatest gift in its fullness, full reconciliation with you, living in your presence for all eternity, praising you around your throne and this newly created earth. We look forward to that day. We pray, Jesus, uh, that you will come in your mighty name. Amen.